left center field. Yes, sir, there goes number 36 for Josh. The Blue Jays are in flight, leading Detroit 1-0 as Donaldson hits his 11th first inning home run to the delight of this crowd already on its feet and yelling. Blue Jays blasted the Tigers 9-2, the call on the Blue Jays radio network. The Yankees racked up 21 hits. They routed the Braves. Chase Headley crushed one. The right-hander deals. Swung on and hit in the air to deep center. Born back. He's on the track. He's at the wall. She's gone. Over the 400-foot side in dead center field. Headley is deadly. You can bank on Chase. A two-run home run. And the Yankees now have a big, fat 5 nothing lead. 20-6, they would route the Braves to call on the Yankees radio network. Twins top the Astros 7-5. Rangers blink the Orioles 6 zip. Abraham Almonte hit a grand slam. The Indians took down the Angels 9-2. White Sox walked off in 11 to beat the Mariners 6-5. Aisley, the D-back, 6-4 in the 11th. Padre, uh, Padres pounded the Phillies 9-4, and the Brewers beat the Reds 4-1. Raiders Cardinals getting underway on NBC. Texans took down the Saints 27-13. Dave Joseph, NBC Sports Radio. Radio. This is KCAA. Consider this your invitation to sell. At buysellmakeoffer.com, you can sell as much as you want for the next 60 days without paying any fees whatsoever. Sound incredible? It is, and it's true. Buysellmakeoffer.com is the new exciting way to sell your stuff online. Make extra money right now. Sell your old car, furniture, video games, household items, clothes, even your home. Sell anything that's legal. Load up your stuff to sell right now at buysellmakeoffer.com. This is your official invitation to get on board to sell your stuff right now free for the next 60 days and once you see how easy it is you'll want to sign up for more because there are no item fees that's right take this opportunity to move items from the other guys and sell it for free you might even win a samsung tablet amazon gift cards and other cool prizes buy sell make offer.com is the future of online selling you can use skype to talk to your buyer or seller plus you can use video to showcase your items buy sell make offer.com From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Dave Murs. This afternoon, sunshine, 95 gusty breezes. Into your evening, clear, breezy, 67. By tomorrow for Monday, we get some sunshine back. Calm winds, high, 91. Monday evening, clear, light winds, gusty times early, low, low to mid 60s. Into your Tuesday, some sunshine to come. A dry start to September, the high in the mid 80s. That's your weather forecast for this hour from the station that leaves no listener behind. NBC News Radio, AM 1050, KCAA. Attention homeowners, is your fixed rate above 3.75%? Hello, Sean Nevin here, president of Pacific Home Loans. We are a direct lender specializing in refinance and purchase loans with a AAA rating from the BBB. As a local Southern California lender, we pride ourselves on superior customer service while delivering the absolute lowest rates. Pacific Home Loans will pay you $500 if any of our competitors can beat our offer. Purchasing a home? We will close your loan in 20 days or pay your moving costs. What lender does that? With home values on the rise, now is the perfect time to get cash out. We offer the lowest conventional Jumbo, FHA, and VA rates in the market. Saving money is important to you. Call 888-888-BLUE or go to phloans.com. Call 888-888-2583 and ask about our no-cost 3% fixed rate. A five-minute call can save you thousands of dollars. Certain restrictions apply. Not all applicants will qualify. Licensed by the BRE 01912112. NMLS license number 90616. $500 offer subject to management approval. Moving costs limited to $500. 3% APR fixed rate amortized over 120 payments. 725 go. 80% max LTV. If saving money is important to you, Welcome to Wyatt's Paint and Body in sunny San Bernardino, California. Hey, if we can't fix your car, nobody can. Wyatt's Paint and Body started um, in 1975. My father, Randy Wyatt, opened the business because he had a passion for cars and he developed a real strong love for San Bernardino. Our primary business is collision repair. We can negotiate with the insurance company how to repair your vehicle, but that doesn't mean that's where we stop. We also have done restoration work. We've done custom work. We will match the paint to where you wouldn't see the difference of what we repaired and what we painted versus what was already on the vehicle. We do a lot of repairs in-house as far as brakes to suspension parts. 
that may be out of alignment or damaged, so they may need to be replaced. Frame repair, when a vehicle gets hit so hard that uh, the frame's bent or shifted, we have to repair the frame back to its specifications. We can take care of all that, but it just doesn't stop at vehicles. We painted boats. We've repaired uh, motorcycles. We've developed a great relationship with the city and the county of San Bernardino. Occasionally, we'll have the city vehicles and also Caltrans. Taking care of a customer is number one. When a vehicle enters our shop, we will take it to the fullest to make sure that that customer is happy. When someone has their vehicle damaged and they don't know where else to turn and they come to you and you repair the vehicle and the person's crying, tears of joy, when you hand them the keys, that's something you can't get anywhere else. It's a very good feeling and I really enjoy that. This isn't just a job, this is a life. This is my life. If you ever need your car worked on, come to 350 North Rancho Avenue, San Bernardino, California, or you can call us at 909-885-5051. You're not just a job, you're not just a dent on the fender, you're a person. Here at Wyatt's Pain Body, no one will treat you like we do. Welcome to Wyatt's Paint and Body in sunny San Bernardino, California. Hey, if we can't fix your car, nobody can. We can negotiate with the insurance company how to repair your vehicle, but that doesn't mean that's where we stop. We also have done restoration work. We've done custom work. We will match the paint to where you wouldn't see the difference of what we repaired and what we painted versus what was already on the vehicle. We do a lot of repairs in-house. We painted boats. We've repaired uh, motorcycles. We've developed a great relationship with the city and the county of San Bernardino. Taking care of a customer is number one. When you hand them the keys, that's something you can't get anywhere else. It's a very good feeling and I really enjoy that. This isn't just a job, this is a life. This is my life. If you ever need your car worked on, come to 350 North Rancho Avenue, San Bernardino, California, or you can call us at 909 885 5051. You're not just a job. You're not just a dent on the fender. You're a person. Here at Wyatt's Pain Body, no one will treat you like we do. E digits. Lock them in for more information, recreation, and guaranteed fun. KCAA 1050 AM. San Bernardino, we're back here with the normal talent show, but today we're going to focus a little bit on something different, a, a build-up San Bernardino panel. Um, unfortunately, our talent for today was uh, ill. Actually, one of the, the guitarists had a bad knee or knee surgery or something. He didn't remember that he had that. So we're going to set it up for another time. 
But uh, um, before I get started, I'd like to mention our sponsors, Wyatt's Paint and Body, located on 350 North Rancho Avenue, San Bernardino, California, 92404. Call 909-885-5051. They will take care of all your auto body needs. The Alcarez and Angel Baby Sunday Block thanks you. And I'd like to mention our new sponsor, Quick Evictions. Landlords, are you frustrated? Need help? Give us a call. Want to save money on your evictions? Give us a call today. Established 1979 with over 30 years experience. For an appointment, call 909-804-8990. 909-804-8990. And uh, Angel Baby will be out this week, so uh, I'm sorry about that, but we will be uh, continuing the show in an hour. And uh, I'd like to say also that uh, I'd like to thank Mr. TikTok, uh, DJ TikTok, Joaquin Alva, for um, interning here on I Love San Bernardino and the talent show with Angel Baby. He's moving on to another internship, and I wish him the best, and I just think that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, he's 16 years old, moving around, and you know what? You got to do what you got to do to get that experience right now, and he's always welcome to guest star back here, DJ TikTok. Right on. Um, and uh, we'll start here with the Build San Bernardino Up panel. So what I want to do here is I want to give you something that San Bernardino already has, and then you have to say something good or how to make it better. And uh, please try to stay away from the negativity, you know. Uh, I, I want to try to take these ideas and do better with them. So we'll start, uh, we'll, 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 before we get into that, I'm sorry, we have a very special announcement from Miss Barbara Babcock. So please, please, uh, let, let the people know what's going down. Well, Thursday, I spent about four hours with Kim Carter, Time for Change. She was just an amazing woman, spent time in prison, and she has now impacted hundreds and thousands of lives. Every year, right after Thanksgiving, there's a huge contest from CNN. It's called CNN Heroes. They get tens of thousands of submissions. Kim and Time for Change is in the top 25. Now, everybody's going, yee, that's great. Here's the big deal. In about a week or two, they haven't told her yet, but she's going to be able, we're going to start voting for them. So I want you to go to Facebook and look up Time for Change Foundation, because if Kim wins the big prize, it's a hundred thousand dollars. Wow! But she she, she did get twenty five, right? Get the, she will get the twenty five. Wow! And um, to, it's to spend on what on, on her her organization, on her organization, right? her program. But the great thing is, the one or two top people. This is just so thrilling. Ipiani and I were talking about it. Is the organizations that win, they often end up getting tens and millions of dollars from other donations. So the hundred thousand is a teaser. Although it's huge money right now, it sounds like the world to me. Mm-hmm. You know, a hundred thousand dollars. So it would actually be one hundred twenty-five. But just to think, so everybody go to Time for Change Foundation on Facebook and like it and have your friends because when they tell her the contest starts, the the group with the most votes wins. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I think this is incredible. Yeah. I mean, that's that's incredible media. Um, national media coverage. Exactly. She's been nominated a few times before, but like I said, tens of thousands of people are nominated from all around so, the world. So how do we give CNA a, CNN a high five in the LA Times a thumbs down, man? You, did, you, just, <laughs> you, did, you just did. You just did. Um, can, can we please get Mr. Alcaraz a chair? I'd love for him to have a chair over here. Um, yeah, yeah, get this guy a chair. This is my co- co-host needs a chair, man. Um, See, if I was out of my knees, I might not get back yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know how hard that, that is. It kind of hurts to sit like that. Um, I'd like to, so we'll, we'll start up with this panel. Um, the first question we got for our Build Up San Bernardino panel. Now we got uh, Ms. Barbara Babcock, Scott Beard here, Danny Alcarez, and Scott Olson ready for Building Up San Bernardino. And Ipiani Lockhart's moving on in. All right, the first question <coughs> is, what, tell us, ha- okay, okay, tell us, uh, oh, tell us how you would improve SBX. Mr. Alcarez. What's SBX? That's the, the bus, bus thing? Yeah, the bus. Well, we Next can't question. we can't fix that <clears throat> until we fi- get more people here. Oh yeah, well, that, uh, how are we gonna improve it though? That's my thing. It, uh, positive. We're thinking positive on this uh, panel. Let's deal with the housing, like Mr. Okay, Pearson. more housing around S- SBX. Yes. Okay. All right, Miss Babcock, how how can we improve SBX? Just every now and then, take it. Mm. Just take it now and then. Margaret Hill and another friend and I are gonna just we're gonna park the car up at Cal State. And I don't even drive yet. Um, we're going to take the bus from Cal State. We're going to go down to Hospitality Lane. We're going to get something to eat. We're going to go to Redlands, 
and then we're going to come back and just have it a girl's afternoon out. All right. So just Do use it. it. Hello. All right. I didn't even think oh, of that one. M- M- Mr. Beard, uh, how can we improve SBX? We can take down those ugly yellow <laughs> sticker things. Those, those uh, d- d- the, the delineators? Road, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. There's got to be a, a more... Uh, those ruin my pictures, by the way. ...friendly yeah. way to do that. Yes, it's, I agree. Uh, pretty yeah. ugly. <laughs> yeah, <we could. laughs> Yanni, Yanni, what's um, going down? Well, you know what? What I will say is that um, I love what they did with the new transportation center. Yes. Um, that was open, I believe. The the um, the celebration was this Monday, I believe, that this just past mm-hmm. Monday, and um, it's a beautiful building. Um, to me, I look at that as a sign that um, we are turning in the right direction. Because usually, building when you see build, buildings being built, that's usually a telltale sign that things are moving. Mm-hmm. So I hope that it's just a, a pinnacle for the change that we hope to see in um, San Bernardino, um, the heart of the city as well as the county as well. Okay, okay. Mr. Olson. Well, um, if I need to ride SBX, I'll ride the bus. Um, as far as where I live and where it runs, it's just not within my sphere of where I go. Mm-hmm. If you're going to improve SBX, that's Omnitrans, that's their responsibility. The real challenge is improving E Street. You have to create a situation where you minimalize as many of the negatives that have been created with the changes if you can't bring legitimate small businesses back onto east street sbx won't matter so build up the small business around around it make with, sure. with a little housing is it not uh, what they're planning for carousel mall um there is a housing component um everybody always says oh we have to do this or that um alp uh, palazzo made an awesome point to me uh there are eight thousand workers who make a lot of money and they jump onto F- fifth street and third street and they hit the freeway so we need to keep them here we should have to start out with the first thing we should build is housing like they live in in rancho cucamongo or upland or wherever they're going put middle higher income um homes so they can walk to work. In I think you words, might be able to agree with something with Mr. Beard. <laughs> well, all right, all the, the, right. The last thing we need, uh, we've already got lots of lower income stock. It needs to be improved. Yeah, you're right. It's in bad shape. Mm-hmm. But if we do not cater to the individuals who will build this city up, which is the office workers, if they're going to leave the city every night, we're not getting their money. Yeah, we need to keep them here. That's that's important. Yes. All right. The, those were great answers for that first you one. You didn't answer the question. How do, what do you think, Robert? Well, I was very impressed with just writing it. I mean, I have to say I'm embarrassed. I, I've ridden public transportation, I think, twice in my life. And that's because I like to walk. Yeah. I... I I wouldn't even think twice about taking the bus to Cal State San Bernardino. You know, it's five miles from my house, but I'd walk it and just go, you know? So, I mean, I, I guess I need to personally make an effort to learn how to use these transportation systems better. So maybe make an effort to learn to use it cro- properly. Robert, have you had Marvin on? People know him as never, but his real name uh, is Marvin. Oh, Norman. yeah, yes, yes, yes. He's actually involved with a documentary right now that a group from the East Coast is doing talking about his involvement with that big contest that we had last year. I need to have him on again, yeah. San Bernardino actually won the best urban transit, most improved urban transit um, mm. street in San, in the country. And, the, and he did it, we did it all because Marvin took the time to actually submit and that you paperwork. Guys, and yeah. you guys got on voted board it and up. we voted it on. I mean, we were working. 20. So that, that was, fun. you know, we need to get, Marvin, you're coming on soon. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the next question. Uh, how would we make our police department better? Mr. Alcarez. I think we need to fix the diocese first and get some kind of revenue so we can have more police officers. Oh, so hire more police officers. Yes. All right, that's good. Ms. Babcock. I really like the fact that we have a locally grown person that is our police chief now. Jared Bergwan is doing a good job. Um, he grew up here. He has spent his career here. And we just need to tell them that we appreciate what they're doing. I mean, they're doing with they're doing some innovative things. Scott will be able to talk more about that. You were on police oh, commission for a number of yeah, years. Hand that off to me, do you, William? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Baird, how will we how will we improve San Bernardino Police Department? 
you know, we, we're, we are fortunate to have the chief that we have, and he's got a very good staff. Uh, they are doing, by necessity, very innovative policing just to keep up given their staff count. But we, in order to have a better department, we are going to have to provide more folks, and uh, their equipment is in pretty tough shape. They're just starting to get some new vehicles, and <clears throat> technology has advanced quite a bit. I think yeah, we'd all they, they need some drones, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, Jared's a big drone guy, the chief. He lo he personally likes to fly drones, believe it or not. But uh, I think more importantly is getting the body cameras uh, for those guys and uh, just helping them get their equipment modernized. And, you know, we need to get 50 cops, 50 more the cops on the street. Takes money. Yeah, yeah and, and again, it all does take money, exactly. Body, and that, body cameras are interesting, though, because <coughs> they could apply for grants federally for those, right? And I think they are doing mm -hmm. some of that. You know, and that, that's a, that goes to another point, just on the city overall. We are not really good about Applying taking advantage of grants. Yeah. We need to really try to pursue those. The only way to get grants is to apply for and them. And we're, you know, we are broke, so it's not like we don't need them. Um, I definitely feel like um, community engagement. Um, I feel like we have to build up the rapport between the community and the um, law enforcement because with so much stuff going on in our country nowadays and um, with the way a lot of us have been raised, especially um, your minorities in um, I like to call it the minority majority in this country. We haven't always had the best run-ins. Now, I know very well that every single police officer is not bad, and I know that every person in the community is not doing great things either. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But um, we need to realize that it's a benefit to have for, it's a benefit for all of us to work together to make sure that we get our community clear of the things like people that are out here killing um, innocent people and stuff like that like I'm not for that you know if you live by the sword you die by the sword if you choose that kind of life that's the kind of rep repercussions but we just had a young a, a four year old child probably about a month ago I believe his name was Danny some, I'm, don't quote me on the name but the young man was killed in Highland he's only four years old and um, we, we, we can't have that in our community because those those kind of losses are senseless and we have to get engaged with law enforcement and as a community and come together to fix the situation because we all deserve a lot of good too huh? it really does it really does that child didn't deserve that no one deserves that innocence like nobody deserves R arrest that. is so and we dedicate yeah. this show to him amen, right. amen. Uh, mr uh, olson um my background is not specifically law enforcement but i have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice um i i worked in uh the counseling end of it for over a decade, various different jobs. Any situation you've got where you're trying to improve things, the first thing that's got to happen is respect. Respect is top down. From the sixth floor to the second floor, let's, this whole thing that we went through at Charter 186, if you're somebody who's looking for a job, you want stability. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're going to come here and you're going to put your, your life on the line for San Bernardino, we have to pay them appropriately, we have to give them the right equipment, and they have to know that they're loved and respected. Yes, I know some people don't like the cops. Okay, that happens everywhere. Yes, I know there's always a bad apple. But don't, you know, our problem in San Bernardino isn't about we have a bad apple cop. It's about the fact that we have got to realize that without them, this community is anarchy. Okay. All right. Now I have a, two things. I, I think that uh, we could actually improve the police department by, um, how do you say it? Uh, cr letting them, uh, oh, I just had, what do you call a brain fart? Have you had one of those on, on, on? You want them to have brain freezes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I don't know if you're allowed to say that. <laughs> I think he just did. Uh, it's too late. We'll oh, have the check. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had two great ideas, and then I was, then it just totally, they just went away. Oh, okay, there, there we is. go, there we go. Yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> basically uh, taking uh, cannabis off of their tape, their uh, palate. You know, they don't have, if they don't have to deal with all these cannabis issues with a proper commission, then, you know, it'll be a lot easier for them to focus on other things. And uh, inviting them into our community by finding some way to make it easier for them to of, um, uh, buy a house in, within city limits. Um, you, they don't have to live here. They can be uh, concerned about their children and, and live in other communities I'm if sure, they wish. Sure. But uh, I want the police officers that that aren't concerned so much about that, knowing they can still protect their kids, 
but come to our city and live here like George Finkel did for his whole life and raised his family. And he went through the 187 years of, Isla, of San Bernardino when we were the murder capital of the world. He didn't move. He still lived here. I've been out with law enforcement officers that worked for Juvenile Hall, and they've seen actual, you know, members of gangs and stuff that they saw in Juvie, and, you know, they yelled at them, and there was problems and stuff, but they didn't move out of San Bernardino. They stayed here. It takes a certain amount of guts. So I would like to ask if, if there, any there of the... A, there yeah. is a program available through HUD mm -hmm. <coughs> that we, does provide for that. And can, and we, actually, can we get that implemented hardcore here? Or? Yeah, no, I mean, it's not a, it's not a difficult thing mm -hmm. to get implemented at all. And uh, it, again, goes back to focus on what are the issues that are important to the city. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that, along what Scott was saying, the fact that we just signed a five-year agreement with the POA brings the stability. Oh, yeah, that, that's uh, true. Regardless of what happens with the char uh, charter now, mm -hmm. we at least the our police officers know they have a five-year agreement with the city and they know where they're headed and that is a huge deal to them. That, that, that is positive I didn't think about that all right okay here's the next question how do we create more events for kids and families Danny Alcaraz we need to get together and create it okay we need to create movements the people need to stand up people together yes it takes people to do that okay all right and advertise it advertise it here okay but getting you getting some promotion out there yes Ms. Ms. B. well i guess i could talk about the fine arts commission okay. we're about the only ones with money uh back in <laughs> judith Vias's day she implemented uh, imposed a, a tax half a percent on all development and that money goes to fine arts so we recently received 19. We're always picking on the developers. <laughs> I know, well, those ugly out of town developers. Um, but we, we put out for grants and 19 applied and we funded 14 of them. Wow. We had things for the kids in the parks. We have about seven schools that we're funding and some creative things. You're gonna be hearing a lot about it. Cool, You're going to be cool. hearing a lot about it, and we gave each council person five thousand dollars. And I got a thousand of that. You did. I told you to apply. Couldn't mm -hmm. couldn't help you because I can't have a conflict of interest. But I said you can certainly apply. Well, um, I didn't need help on that one. I just I know. The truth. I know. But anyway, it's it was interesting though because many of the council members go, well, we don't know who's doing what in our council in our ward, and I go, well, duh. That was the purpose of the money is to give you five thousand dollars, and we had to basically tell many of them what the talent was. That's their job. They need to be out there knowing what's going on. Um, and all, well, also the citizens, we gotta go out there and apply for those grants too. We need, right. to, we need to hit people up and be like, hey, we'll are be there any grants available? We're gonna be doing a second round of grants this fall. <coughs> Excellent. 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 Right. That, is, that is, how much money is in the Fine Arts Commission right now? We've got, well, it, until the money is all accounted for with the audits, but we have somewhere around between one and 1.4 million. Okay, so that's wow. gonna, I expect some excellent But we're not gonna spend all of it at once. I mean, that's gonna be- You just got elected to the commission too, right? Well, I was an alternate before, mm -hmm. and then I was voted on, and I'm now the vice chair of oh, the commission. Okay. Congratulations. Excellent. Can we get some of that money? <laughs> <laughs> it all has to be in San Bernardino. <laughs> okay. Mr. I love San Bernardino right oh, there. How was Judy anyways, how was Judy? Judy Vice. Well, you know what, sh I'm friends with her now, but I wasn't living here during that time. Oh. Mr. Beard, uh, how, how would you uh, create more events for uh, youngsters and families? Well, I think uh, the challenge today is society is a lot different than it used to be. Uh, and what kids do for entertainment is different than what we all did as when we were kids. Uh, I think one of the big issues is we got to get our parks safe for families to go do their thing at. And, uh, I agree. I think if you have a safe environment for their kids and their families to play baseball or soccer or whatever it may be, uh, you know, you will <clears throat> start to grow those programs. But right now, I think, you know, our parks are struggling because of the condition they're in. And then, you know, we all know the struggles with homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's not a safe environment if you're trying to go up and do something at a park and you're having to deal with that. So. Uh, stricter enforcement at our parks and uh i think that's but i also think that's manageable to to barbara's credit uh dr garcia is doing a fantastic job Excellent. with uh 
the process of renovating the, cultural, the uh, center. cultural center and the gen now kids have gotten engaged with that i mean we have the be beginnings of uh, a great arts community and that's obviously one of the buzz things that's been talked about the last couple of years is how do we grow that into something that uh, becomes an economic driver here as well so good good yeah, i love to hear that because arts can be free because it comes from the creative people <laughs> that create it right so yeah. like like me and Yanni can create a poem for free, Definitely. and and where's the city utilizing that? So that's like we're hoping more open mic nights and more events where we can actually speak out and things like that, but no one's utilizing us. There's talent everywhere, and we're not utilizing. So that's what I think uh, they, the city could do to improve uh, um, things for kids and uh, families more is actually finding some talent and getting it out there for them. Um, I definitely um, are feel what Mr. Beard is saying because to me I see art more so. Art can save lives. Mm -hmm. Giving people the tools that they need to express the feelings that they have on the inside really could be um, a healing process for them oh, because yeah. so often we bottle so many things up. And yes, shout out to San Bernardino Generation now. I've worked with them. I've been volunteering, volunteering every Saturday at the um, center. So come on down to the center every Saturday from 9 to 12. Where is it located? Um, it's on um, E Street and 11th, I believe, is on E and 11th. And, um, it's a great job. Um, Dr. Garcia has a wonderful vision with that. Everybody's more than welcome. We go and do that. But one thing, the reason I mentioned San Bernardino Generation now, um, the murals, working with them and cleaning up. We used to do the park cleanups there every every other week. And um, we, we're going down there making a difference. And I, I just... A real so, difference. A real difference. Yeah. And I hear so many people talking about how beautiful it is. And um, we have so many great entities in our community, such as like Young Visionaries, Youth Action Project. Um, these people have events that bring the youth out and families out. Time for Change is about, you know, getting empowering women after they've been through their struggles and getting that family to back together because that's what we need. We need to have the, get back to family like that. We also need to have safe parks as, as well. We need parks where, because it's kind of hard to have the kids play and you're worried about you know yeah. who's that over there you know yeah. you can't really have a good time when you you have to be on guard and we don't we want people to come out and and, and enjoy the parks the way they should be so we just got to make sure we do clean up the park but i'm not just saying just throw the homeless out of there we need to create options for them and yeah. ways to get them back on their feet because there's got to be a way to integrate them like venice for me i i think that venice is a proper example um if we gave them opportunities to sell things or something i don't, I don't know I just, we, we got to figure something there has out. to be an answer you got to figure something out you, i don't know what to do but you, man it's it's getting worse Complicated. Yeah, there's mm. more people showing up at the parks and i notice it every morning at starbucks that there's people there that weren't there before and I, I feel for all of them. I never give them money, but I give them so moral support and I give them emotional support. But uh, oh wait, wait, one more. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Olson. Um, I honestly, in San Bernardino, uh, there's a lot of community events going on in the private sector. Uh, as far as the city goes, um, one of the big ones that I really hope gets a lot of support coming back because it's all over the community is the Ho Ho Parade. Mm -hmm. That should have never had to go the way it did. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we're sitting here in a mall, and look how much space we have outside. This city could have pulled in how many community events. If you want to have a bridal show, you've got to go on to Ontario. You can't come here to Central City Mall. The Orange Show doesn't do that anymore. Garden shows. I mean, arts, crafts. Cannabis shows. Well... You know, they've got a great facility over there for the cannabis stuff. I'm talking the stuff that you can bring your little kids to. Okay, Halloween. Okay, not everybody's into Halloween. We have harvest events all over the city. Why couldn't we, with all the square footage we've got in this mall, contract out with Disneyland or Knott's Berry Farm and have the, the Southern California's largest haunted mall? Mm. That's just a matter of working with them. Instead, we sit empty. This is a huge community asset, and yet the community does nothing. To his question, didn't we talk about that last week, and then the state owns this now? Yeah, and we can't. But well, we could still have some event like that somewhere else at the Inland Center Mall. Do we have to get permission from the state? I don't know, but I, I like the I like the Halloween. idea. Yeah. I like the uh, thought process. Put it this way. If Knott's Berry Farm or Disneyland says we want to do something here, 
the They'll state will cooperate. Yeah, that's uh, a great idea. If the state does not allow us to do th simple community events in the open mall area when we're already having businesses and government stuff in here, then we need to put the screws on the state. Mm. Don't be worried about no. Work towards the yes. Mm. All right, team. Well, that was the Build San Bernardino Up panel. I'd like to thank all the, con the, the contestants on here for my <laughs> great questions <laughs> and uh, putting up with m my brain fart over there. Uh, Joe, could you hit the music, brother? Give me a second. I, I need to get my story straight. My friends are in the bathroom getting higher than the Empire State. She's waiting for me just across the bar. My seat's been taken by some sunglasses, asking about a scar. And I know I gave it to you months ago. I know you're trying to forget. But between the drinks and subtle things, the holes in my apologies, you know, I'm trying hard to take it back. So if by the time the bar closes and you feel like falling down, I'll carry you home tonight We are young So let's set the world on fire We can burn brighter than the sun No, I know that I'm not all that you got I guess that I, I just thought Maybe we could find new ways to fall apart But our friends are back So let's raise a tag Cause I found someone to carry me home Tonight We are young So Closes and you feel like falling down. I'll carry you home tonight. What's up, team? We're back here with Cannabis Corner and, and Elmo Green Meds, my co-host, and Danny Alcarez. We got a uh, 
if you on Lockhart, man, I always mess up your name, brother. <laughs> and uh, um, Benita, Benita Rodriguez, um, we're just kicking butt, taking names. We got. Are you Are you gonna come on in here, Jay? Sure, sure, is there a seat? Sure, 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 sure. We got Debbie Coleman yep. here with us too today. Again. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Debra Coleman, and uh, we got uh, Richard taking pictures over there on the. Co- so we got a whole crew here today. Did you talk about reach? Reach, reach. Oh, no, we didn't get to mention that. Go ahead, throw that out there. Well, definitely, definitely. That was just a wonderful outreach on Saturday. Um, The community came out. We want more community engagement. Um, The lady that was leading the reach um, movement. Melly Serrano. Yeah, she was here last Sunday. And um, And Jay Jay Valdivia. Yeah, they came out. Um, It was only about, probably about, what, eight or nine of us. But we got like 15, almost 20 bags of trash. We made a difference. We made an impact. We just want to see more people coming out and engaging, knowing that, hey, it's on us to better our society it's on us to better our community it's on us so let's come out there and pour out that effort to beautify our city it's such a wonderful thing when you go out there and pour out the effort to beautify the city because it makes it better for all of us yes it does and people see that i, I yes. had a um a, a neo hunter gatherer walk up to me and said you know that as soon as you leave here they're going to give out free food and they're going to take the trash and throw it all over there again and I'm like, yeah, but at least they'll eat here in a clean spot. Hey, no. That's right? true. Right? Oh, yeah. That is true. You just, just, just let them know, hey, you know, you can't look at it like it's automatically yeah. going to fail. That's you know? it. Almost like um, the one gentleman said, we got to look for the yeses, not the noes. It's like we got to see the benefit, the positive benefits and not. We all see the, the obvious, you know. We want that change. So we're looking for positives to bring more positive change. So, Well, one, one positive change uh, is uh, going to be mentioned. Uh, uh, do you have a question real quick? No, I was just going to say that I went by there just to check it out, and it was still really pretty clean. Cool, cool, so. good, good, good. And uh, I drove by there today, too, and I saw cleanness, too. Yeah. So I was like, all right. Yeah. All right, Mr. Uh, Green Meds. Well, uh, it's been a wild week. Uh, we had the governor mention that uh, they may regulate cannabis legislatively in yes. our uh, um, in our state. I, I, do you know anything more about that? What's going um, on? There? Not really at the moment. It just seems like they they took um, some of the legislator um, that was going through Sacramento, uh, in particular AB two sixty six, which we talked about here on the show, and. Uh, they gutted it, scrapped it, mm-hmm. and said, uh, we're regulating this. So, so, so they're trying to jump the ballot initiatives? I don't know if it's that they're trying to jump the ballot initiatives or that they want to really be serious about how this is uh, um, regulated. I think it's a little bit of both, and I do believe that what will happen here is they'll end up adopting. They, they want to have a framework so when it is legalized, then they can just add to it. Right. Because it's better than just starting from plane zero. You don't agree? You don't agree, Jay? I don't trust this government with anything, <laughs> especially regulating cannabis. It's like if you really want what you really want, the best way to do it is to put it on the ballot and let the public decide. Yeah. So it so it, it is going to happen that way, right? So what happens if we have the the legislation and a ballot initiative? Well, hopefully we have a war and the and the. Um, <laughs> And the voters win, but I... <laughs> well, the, the legislation it is um, regarding regulating medical, and the ballot initiatives that will be coming out for 2016 are... Full legalization. Legalization, uh, age-restricted, hemp. So, so we'll have a variety of, of, of options in the future as to how we regulate and what type of products for what uses. Okay. Uh, now, I do have a really serious question. Is your brain smaller, Mr. Green Meds? <laughs> Is my brain smaller? <laughs> um, you know what? I would have to dig out. I've had a, a scan. I'd have to try and get my medical records if I not. But you know, according to medical yeah, research, please expl- please I, I might joke. have a smaller amygdala, which is um, your midbrain that causes you, causes you to switch between your cognitive thought and your animal instinct. Mm-hmm. Your, your fight, flight, fear response. It, and so with a smaller amygdala, you know, I might not be willing to, to fight against certain things. And I think or you I, might not be, I might not be afraid of certain things. My startle response is lowered. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I act on less of an animal instinct and more of 
cognitive thought. This so is the way is that it po- I think. Is that it possible that people that have this, I, I guess, uh, not abnormality, it's just more just like your brain's like that, they may be attracted to cannabis because. That's quite possible. Yeah, yeah. We don't know really anything what these. I just of I wanted to make fun of that are. study because I, I heard, yeah, I heard, I heard it broad broad strokes and said everyone yeah, is a smaller, smaller brain. brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why does everybody have a smaller brain? I, I, I don't really don't we they don't know the answer. That's what's so funny. They made the headline, but yeah. there was real no uh, <laughs> there is no meat to the subject in the article. But you know, there's certain people that will grab that information and yeah. r- run to the end of the uh, earth yeah. with it. Smaller doesn't mean worse. Yeah, yeah. And abdorn, you know, changes don't mean negatives. We have to look at these things and try and understand them instead of just being afraid, you know, letting that amygdala response kick in. That's what I think a lot of these articles just are, are trying to do. They, they want you to be afraid. They want you to run or, or freeze up and not participate in the system. Which which worked well for for a long time. Yes, Over it forty did. years, right? The drug. There, there How long stu- has the drug war been going on, uh, uh, Jay? <laughs> Don't you like last, quote that? The last round, forty-two years. I was in high school. Forty-two when this years. Stupid con game started. <laughs> Thank That's you. being nice. <laughs> 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 it, it was a form of what, redistributing the money around. Yeah, I mean, it worked well for some people, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a lot of people that got filthy, dirty, stinking, filthy rich well, off of this war. Off of locking people in cages mm-hmm, for right. for a plant or something that they just disapprove of that really wasn't breaking a law other than somebody else didn't like what they were doing. Yeah, cannabis is uh, definitely moving forward. I've I've watched a lot of uh, conversations. I've watched a lot of negative. Uh, turn into positive so i think as uh, we're moving on here uh we can look at some of the products that cannabis is uh b- been moving into um we wanted to talk about uh, hemp facials now <laughs> 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 we, we, now who's gonna who's gonna be who's gonna take the first hemp facial here elmo <laughs> i i heard that i needed to shave first i didn't oh. Come prepared. Well, well De- 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 Deborah, you brought all you the know, things. I just, just shaved before I came here. I just I brought these in a, as an example because. Well, could you explain each one for us? Real I quick? can. Thanks. This, this is Deborah Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> on the radio with my show and tell. Yeah, yeah. All right, these well, are. Well, there's a camera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. These these are hemp seeds. <laughs> they cannot be grown in California because hemp is illegal. But hemp they're they're, seeds, they're they're irradiated, so they can't grow, right? And, oh and yeah, yeah, yeah. up the price fourfold there, for them. Oh. This, this, and these hemp seeds I bought, and the hemp powder, and the hemp seed oil I bought at Loma Linda Market. They're all grown and produced in Canada. Are you getting high off that? Or no, what? It, it's just hemp. It's. You, I can't just lather it all no, over my body no, and just there's, like there's trip nothing, out. There's There's no THC in that. It's well, who wants that? Oil. What do you need that well, for? Well, I do because I'm a licensed esthetician and I've been doing my research, and this is the best stuff you can put on your skin. Oh, what, so what does it do? Yeah. The ben- well, yawny, yawny. number one with with acne, if you take two tablespoons of the hemp seed oil a day, it will help your oil, your sebaceous and our glands stimulate and pro- and um, produce a cleaner oil which that just blew my mind I was never taught that in school really but that's what happens with hemp seed oil if if cannabis had been studied openly for the past 50 years would be much farther ahead so this was my point is you know I'm buying this here at Loma Linda market can't be grown here it can legally it's just it just seems well, where, a little where, where, does, where does Loma Linda me. get their from Canada. Hemp products. This from is Canada. A, this is imported from Canada. Hemp is... Uh, so Canada's making money again now. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're, we're, Everything's outsourced. <laughs> so if this, can, is, if this is illegal, I mean, can it, they sell it? No, it's it. hemp is illegal to grow Yeah. because it's relationship to cannabis, mm-hmm. marijuana plants. Yes. Okay. So, so they both got banned together. Yeah. Right? By William Randolph but, Hearst. But hemp is no still legal <laughs> to import into this country. Okay. So you can buy hemp clothing, hemp oil, hemp food products. So you could buy it, but it's not grown here. It's right. not grown From by country. it's not grown oh, okay. by American farmers. And it doesn't farmers. have THC content. Correct. Well, right. 
What is hemp? There, it's a, it's marijuana fiber. It, it's lo, it's low THC marijuana. It, it depends on who you ask. Um, biologically, the in, the easiest answer is hemp is the male plant of the species, and the what we call marijuana, the the flowering plant that produces the buds that people smoke, that that's the female plant of the species. Now, for okay, legal. Okay. For legal risk, <laughs> for well, they they That's both produce they, they both produce flowers and mm -hmm. and the males but produce a pollen. You don't want hemp mating with the with the uh, female uh, cannabis plant, you know. <laughs> so so that and then legal definitions they they put um if it's less than I think one percent THC, you know, then it's considered hemp and and not cannabis. Mm -hmm. And I got a question. Do you think Adam and Eve knew about this? Hand? Absolutely. Absolutely. Of Genesis 1 I could guarantee that they knew about it. If, if you believe in the Bible, all things that were created were created in the first six days. Mm -hmm. So every plant was in the Garden of Eden, and Adam and Eve had access to every plant. That's why they bit the apple, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the budgies. And well, we're not talking about fruit. We're talking about hemp today. We need to legalize this so that I can do there's, facials there's with it. There's, there's no plant on the planet that is more versatile right. than this plant. True. And what, what you know, in, you know, I was looking at this like maybe a decade ago, and I figured that this plant had so much to do with actually creating civilization because you yes. had your access to clothing. You had this great nutritional food source you know you you fed to your livestock you ate it yourself you know the 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 paper you know it's so much easier to make the paper from the fiber it you know and then later on you know like in that that article in 37 from popular mechanics by the way that that um, magazine popular mechanics William Randolph Hearst bought the magazine after they printed this 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 article in 1937. Interesting. So I mean, it's 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 like it's so versatile that you could cut our our oil oil production or our oil consumption by 25 to 30 percent just because you could make all your plastics. Can you can you link this. can you link me that? I'd like to put that on Isla Sandra. Oh, okay. Later, yeah, yeah, it's it's um, but yeah, it's it's you know, everybody that is out there. Like I was I was on the internet to Monsanto. Mm. You know, uh, this, this pro Monsanto site. And I said, you know, the problem that Monsanto has with this product it, is that if you legalized, you know, industrial hemp and you, and you made it accessible to everybody, all, all of Monsanto's products would be worthless. You know, you wouldn't need the pesticides mm -hmm. because you grow, you know, you got these super weeds that were created from Monsanto's, you know, poisons. And, um, you know, all you do is you grow, grow fields of this stuff, and it's so dense that it'll, it'll choke out the other plants. You don't need Monsanto's pesticides when you've got industrial hemp to grow. Mm. You can eliminate those super weeds, and, you know, it's, it's, and it, it's, that, it's that way across, across the board. Well, I, I believe there's room for both, but um, that's just how I am. For, right. for, it, for Monsanto for, and no, cannabis? No, no, no. no. I'm, there's, there's room for cannabis to move into this industry oh, I yes. mean there's no way yeah. to get rid of Monsanto you can talk all day long you're never going to affect them because they're billionaires they don't care what you say but we can affect the cannabis stuff yes and if these things start to move in they may uh, but you, you're never going to get rid you know of what Monsanto. you will choke oh, out I'm... Monsanto mm -hmm. just like you'll choke out their super weeds in the farm bill. They're just going to end up uh, co-opting cannabis. Well, that's what people they, are well, saying. They, they already what, have. Yeah. Um, that, that's what criminalization I is I mean, pretty about. soon right. we're just going to be talking about the same thing because they're going to co-opt it just like the pharmaceutical companies Ex are. That's what I was going to say. And our government and, you know, everyone's going to. This is, this is like the Wild West. This is like when Prohibition ended for alcohol. Everyone's going to try to get into the game, try to fix it, try to make it better, try to do this or that, and let's do it. Except there's no medical benefit in alcohol. Uh, there is alcohol. Well, I, I wouldn't does say that. Al alcohol is the not. number one extracting agent in the pharmaceutical <laughs> sorry, industry. Yes, so, so it's oh, used sorry. to remove <laughs> all the compounds. You can you can also use alcohol but, to clean wounds. I mean, yeah, it's, it's everything. Yeah. 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 Like but I know alcohol is bad. Drinking alcohol, and I will say from an esthetician's point of view, it dries out your skin. It's damaging internally and externally. 
Cannabis is completely different. I don't care if you smoke it, put it on your face, or take it orally. It doesn't There's matter. There's only five minutes left. How is Elmo going to get his facial? <laughs> ah. He has to shave first. He bought it. Oh. I, got, I, got, I just shaved my face. He keeps saying that. He <laughs> wants to go ahead. Go, uh, we have a volunteer right here. Do you want to? Do you want to try it on him? Go I'll ahead. You're welcome I'll to. Do. Sure. I have to bring my stuff in. Oh, okay. Well, oh, we yeah. only have five minutes. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, next time. We'll have to do it another, another time. You know, I'm it's looking at this. I'm yeah, looking at this bottle here. Though. Oh, Benita, you had something to add? Yeah, I just wanted to ask, Debbie. I'm yeah. sure that a lot of pe- lot of the ladies out there would like to know: Does it take away wrinkles, or <laughs> does it make well, you look younger, or what is it? You my know, my facial will help diminish wrinkles. Okay, <laughs> I use the cannabis or the ha- I'll say not cannabis oil, hemp oil for um for kind of um, healing the skin after whatever chemical treatment I use. Or I do dermabrasion, but I use a crystal-free dermabrasion. So no microdermabrasion with crystals being blown into your skin. Okay. And then this is all about healing uh-huh. and, you know, I am, this, all this jargon, what's going <laughs> on? <laughs> like, the males are lost. That's so important. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> but when I stumbled on to it being the highest, I think it's linoleic acid, lin- linole- I don't know how to say it. Anyway, that it with it curing ac- um, acne with two tablespoons a day, that's amazing. I have three kids that were on Accutane. Oh, wow. the omega you know? six, the linoleic acid. Len- okay. What is it? Omega six, the <laughs> linoleic. Lino, no. Yeah, now I can't say <laughs> it. <laughs> 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 Nothing to do with the what's, cannabis. <laughs> what's, what's really important about this is that the way the global economy works for sending jobs overseas. Mm-hmm. If we can take this and we can start producing this stuff in San Bernardino, mm-hmm. we could bring so many good paying jobs. How come There's the, how come the mayor's not listening stuff. to you, Jay? I hear you uh, say this every because meeting. He's a Mormon and they are afraid of anything. I mean, they don't, I heard they don't even drink tea. No yeah, caffeine. Right. No, no caffeine. caffeine. It's you know like, what? That, that's, that's okay. okay. That's okay if like. that's if that's some how somebody else wants <laughs> to live, but I don't necessarily think that the United States government was set up that we should be forced to live under other people's yeah. religious yeah. He's, he's, But he's a businessman, too. He's a businessman. I think... Well, that's what I don't understand. I'm oh. telling my boys that are in college, study hemp. Mama wants you to study hemp, you know? That's an order. Because <laughs> they can make fuel out of hemp. They can... I mean, anything that's made of plastic can be made out of hemp. I didn't know that. Well, we're moving on here. Uh, <laughs> I, we started this conversation... Um, Probably five months ago, Mr. Green Meds, right? Yeah, probably. Uh, no, it's got to be longer than that. Yeah, longer a little bit longer. Man, it's, time flies by. And, and it's, it's interesting how our conversations get deeper and more, and more focused. Um, I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of the negative that, uh, that people want me to portray on here. They're saying I'm not being equal and giving the, the prohibitionist view on here. But I'm not really seeing a point to put it in there if it's not really helping the situation in any way, shape, or form. I agree with keeping drugs, hard drugs away from kids and yes. even cannabis uh, and alcohol yeah. and everything else. Yeah. Right. As long as we can do that, I think right. an adult should make their decision based on uh, what they know. Um, their approach to an equal playing field is that they're the only ones espousing, espousing drug prohibition, you know, protect the children. They're, their idea of equal time is that they have all the floor, and you're not even supposed to think about an alternative. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's, exactly. And that's BS. That's Can I it. say that? That's, and, that's BS. And they need to just tell the truth. This okay. nonsense yeah. about brain damage, and it makes you lazy. And I got my, I got a new life. I didn't get my life back. If if people would just look, <laughs> just look at what Seriously. smoking nicotine Absolutely. does to your brain, does to your body, yeah. all the things that nicotine right. itself does. You would switch a cannabis Im- immediately if you really looked at the comparison. I don't even see why anyone would touch a cigarette. But the tobacco industry is a All right, we're, uh, we're out of here, team. This is Cannabis Corner. Please stay. We're going to have another panel in the first hour of Angel Baby Show. He's not going to show up today. He's a little bit under the weather. But oh, sorry to hear that, Angel yeah, Baby. Uh, yeah. Next better. week, next week. But we're going to have a cool panel, and we'll be back in a, a few minutes. Thank you very much. When you said you felt so happy, you could die. That you were right for me, but felt so lonely in your company. But the- You're on board.
KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Your NBC Sports Radio update starts now. Got a good one going in the Sunday Nighter. I'm Dave Joseph, top of three at Chavez Ravine. It's the Cubs leading the Dodgers to zip. Chris Bryant dealt it a two-run shot off Alex Wood in the first inning. His 21st. Jake Arrieta on the hill for Chicago. Meanwhile, the Cardinals.